This episode of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by Magic the Gathering Magic 2012 Core Set. Coming up, Terrence Malick divides opinions with his enigmatic movie, The Tree of Life. Today in movies, we are joined by Peter Sharetta, editor in chief, creator of slashfilm.com. You may recognize him also from our summer wager episodes, which is yeah. currently it, the race is is hot on right now. <laughs> That's right. And uh, we're all losing, I think, that race. Yeah, the fir first week I went into the Apple store, and so right after I got rung up, the guy at the register was like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for you in the summer movie wager." What the? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, hey, man, Apple Store, watch the Totally Rad Show, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Anyway, we're here to talk about Tree of Life, which is the latest movie from a director we don't see too much work from, but when he, he does make a movie, everyone stops and stares. It's Terrence Malick. Uh, this, I think, debuted at Cannes this year. Did it win the Palme d'Or? Did it win any it awards? I'm not, you know, I, I should know this information. I think it did. Well, we think, we it, think it won uh, the, the highest award you can win at, at Cannes. Um, we think it, it won. You saw it. Didn't you see it at a... Uh, I, I saw it at a, see, uh, at a screening, like, the day it premiered at Cannes. Right, like, okay. in L.A. Okay. Director's Guild. Okay, okay. I thought maybe it was at a different festival. Anyway, it's a it, Brad Pitt, Sean Penn's summer big summer movie, right? <laughs> right, right. So Brad Pitt and Sean Penn are both in it. Uh, they play family members in the O'Brien family, which this movie ostensibly is about that family, but it really is about, uh, it follows their life, and it follows life in general, as in the life of the universe at all. Um, Peter, <laughs> well, you know, and, and the buzz on this movie, some people are, are, are in love with it, some people think it's so one of the greatest movies ever, some people think it's awful. I, I should say a little bit more about Terrence Malick. I said yeah, he, he, he doesn't make too many movies. When he does make movies, they are often uh, very non-traditional narratives. They're very poetic. Uh, right. He made a war film called Thin Red Line. That's probably his most recent and, and movie. If you do recognize any of his films, that would be the one. And it is very much an atypical war film. And, uh, and he's also famous for Days of Heaven, a movie that was shot almost entirely at Magic Hour. Before that, Badlands, for which true uh, romance is based on. Yeah, and it's not just that he decides to make movies so uh, infrequently. infrequently, it's that he spends a lot of time. Like I remember I was at Cannes last year and they thought maybe it would premiere at Cannes last year. Yeah. Like it, he spent like years on this movie. Notorious perfectionist, Yeah. Uh, control freak. Yeah. One of those guys you hear stories about as a director. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that is this movie. It opens this Friday, uh, Peter. Um, who you know, I, 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 I'm not a huge Malik fan. I'm not. I'm not a. Um, you know, I'm a fan of narratives. <laughs> um, and uh, and when there isn't a narrative, I'm fans of uh, um, a spectacle like Transformers. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm not a fan of, of of long boring movies. And I know I'm going to get killed for saying this, but like. This movie, uh, a lot of it is really you're you're seeing, you know, it's it's a tone, it's a feeling, it's not um, a story. It's not and, a plot. Yeah, it's not a plot. Yeah. And on top of that, I, I, but I will say that it you need to be one, you need to be really pretentious to think that you're going to show the creation of everything. But he somehow pulls it off. Like, 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 you need to have some, like, gut to, to, to be like, you know, I'm going to show the creation of, of everything, and I'm not even going to do it with computer-generated effects. This is, like, practical effects. And somehow... Well, there's some CG. Um, there More is a little... Yeah, yeah there's, dinosaurs. There's dinosaurs in this movie. But a lot of that cosmic stuff was actually... Um, Micrography. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which was, which was cool. So I'll, I'll say, if I could see that part of the film, that, that stuff was great, but there was a big chunk of the three-hour movie that I just... Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I wanted to say to you, remind me with the microphone, it, it, this, this movie is basically 2001 on Earth. Hmm. Jeffrey. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Tree of Life. 
I didn't want to go see this. Right. Right? I had heard so much, right? And I was not in the mood to see this last night. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we made the decision to review this movie, and I, I did not want to go. Right. Uh, and these are the kind of movies where you really need to be in the right mood. You do. Right? You do. Uh, it's enigmatic. It's, it's defiant to filmmaking. I think it defies you to like it. It is so, I think, personal and so um, uncompromising that it, it doesn't care what your personal experience is. It wants to be, he wants to make something that is so specific. He doesn't care if, if your viewing experience, he doesn't take your viewing experience into consideration. And for the first hour of this movie, I almost got to the point where I texted you, I don't, I don't text during movies, but I wanted to text you, damn you, Trachtenberg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is, as you said, there is a, Nova documentary sh shoved in the middle, not in the middle, the beginning of this movie. Yeah. You go for about 15 minutes and then this like nature documentary is just shoehorned in and it's long. And I was like, what is, what? I like nature documentaries, but I didn't sign up for this. Okay, so I'm, I'm like <laughs> hating this. And, <laughs> but it's gorgeous and it's beautiful and there's so much of it that's beautiful. It's so confident. And then it continues to get more coherent and more coherent. And it, it, this movie is unlike anything you have ever seen. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. It, it, is, it is shot like a dream or really like memory, how memory works. It's, it's someone's disjointed memories. And as it gets more coherent and more coherent toward the end, I started loving this movie. And by the end, as things, as, you, as things add up to a life, an entire life, and there's so many moments that are like how we remember things and are beautiful, like heart-wrenchingly beautiful, simple moments. A, a mother picking up a child, um, two friends relating, brothers relating, family relating, and it's all wrapped around loss. I mean, this movie is about life and it's about death and it's about everything that happens in the middle. And then by the end, I realized, no, 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 this movie is a prayer. That's the structure of this movie. It's a prayer. And it's, it, I was a mess at the end of this movie, just a mess mm -hmm. of emotion. And it wasn't, and it's so difficult to explain to someone if you haven't seen this movie. There are movies that make me cry, big fish, it's a great one. I don't, Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams, yeah. right? There's a lot of great movies that make me cry, yeah. but they make me cry because of what happens to the people, or so, it's so tragic, or that is not this film. There, there isn't a what happens to these people. There isn't, as you say, there is no plot. It is just raw human feeling. It is, it is the commonality of how we all go through our lives and, and have relationships with people and try to figure out what life is about. And, and it, it, it touches on something that is what no film has ever, I don't think has ever even tried to do. It's touching on something that's below the layer of storytelling that is imagery and it's really more of an art piece than it is a movie. And it, and it, and it got me, man, it got me. And by the end I was like, Thank God I saw this. I'm so glad I saw this. Apology accepted. <laughs> um, I also was dragging my feet uh, to see Tree of Life. I, I, I had learned my lesson with Thin Red Line. I did not like Thin Red Line in the movie theater. And then I watched it uh, at home when I was in the perfect mood to see it. And it was one of my favorite movies. Um, so I was really like, I don't want to just go see Tree of Life. I want to be in the right mood. But from start, to finish, it's one of my favorite movies. Really? It really is. And I'm almost the opposite with you in that I loved, love before it got, it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's like Baraka or Kleana Scotzi, except with dialogue, but I preferred it when it didn't have dialogue. Yeah. And I, I tweeted earlier today yeah. that 
it, it reminded me of a Levi's commercial. And I said, this is the greatest Levi's commercial they, <laughs> that was ever yeah. filmed. But How what, crass what is that, though? I, mean, I think, would, I think Malik would, like, No, cringe. but here's, here, here's, here's why. Let me explain that further, because I think it makes a lot of sense, in that a lot of your favorite commercials, a lot of my favorite commercials, and I'm guessing a lot of yours, are branding commercials. They're the commercials for Nike or Levi's, because those products don't need to tell you what the product is. They just want to connect a feeling with you and the product. So there's yeah. a campaign for Levi's called Go Forth, and it's all about the feeling of going forth. <laughs> and they're just snip, they're slice of life little moments that I, we, I call them poetic, yeah. um, and they're little frames that represent a grander emotion. And that, for so much of this movie, are these little slice of life moments. And as I said, I prefer, I loved when we got into a, a traditional, a more traditional dialogue sequence that was extended um, <laughs> later on in the movie, but I really adored juxtaposing um, dinosaurs with like the mom picking up the kid for the first time and kids running through the thing and you did all these little dead moves that like they it, I smelled my childhood in it. it it all I mean you're saying it was so specific in his thing but like that specificity reminded me so much of even though I didn't grow up that's in the how, 60s that's how all know? art works that's, that's, the more yeah. specific it is the more gen general more universal it is. yeah general. absolutely and I it, and the, another reason why I appreciate the poetry is because it asks you to bring so much to it, and that's why I think that so many people are having different experiences with the movie, yeah. and why you cannot like this movie, because I, I will just reference, there's a moment where it cuts from um, finding out news of, a of, of one of uh, the kids dying, um, to it's, it's, very, it's right at the first five minutes of the movie, and then we cut to an, a brother way older now in the city. And this, the thing I thought the second that happened, that edit happened was, Wow, that kid who died then has no idea what this is. We're in like modern city skyscrapers, yeah. and like that kid doesn't know what this looks like. And that was like this amazing, beautiful moment that I had with the movie that you may have had, you may not yeah. have had. It's because it, it was uh, because of that moment, or not because of that moment. Like it's it was, more like looking at a painting in a museum, exactly. yeah, where you're bringing something. Yeah. And, uh, I will say though, and the music I mean, is beautiful. By the way, you must yeah. have loved the music. Yeah. I feel like no, the yeah. music is beautiful, and I yeah. want to say that I've encountered a lot of people like you that had this religious kind of experience. I'm not a religious person, um, but but like like yeah. that's this is a movie where you'll have that religious experience, and I, I did relate to a lot of the stuff in the earlier part. In the the that childhood is my childhood. Yeah. I, I relate a lot to that, but I was waiting for it to start. The thing yeah. I I, the I can't defend in. is it could have been. A half an hour shorter, tighter, and much more palatable to a mainstream audience that could have really embraced this movie and it could have become popular. And I feel like the filmmaker like defies people, like flies in the face of that. And and it makes me sad because it could have been one of my favorite movies ever if it just didn't fight me away before it pulls me in. I think there's there's movies like this throughout time. I think from uh, from. Uh, a, a French New Wave movie to um, Schenectady, New York, that either it's like in you, in your, you feel it in your gut, or you're like, oh, let's pretend, yeah. you know, and da da da. And like this, for, for me, and clearly for you towards the end, like, it, it, it's, it sunk its teeth in, you know, and it's either for you or not. But I don't know that I would have loved. You know, I don't know that I would have loved the traditional narrative version of it. And no, I don't. I'm not yeah, arguing for yeah, that. Yeah. I'm arguing for this movie. It just yeah. just ed re-edited a half an hour shorter. We can. We don't need 20 minutes of that nature documentary in the beginning. We don't. See, that was one that, of my favorite dude. parts yeah. of the movie. Maybe I, I don't. And, and I want to say the cinematography is amazing. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not sure if you know much about Malik, but uh, he shot something like 200 or 300 to one. Like he just tries to capture yeah. these moments, almost like documentary and he does. kind of style, and he gets and with these really, kids yeah. too. There's there's such truth. There's such truth that happens, and it's because yeah. he's just constantly rolling. And it's very unique. You said dreamlike, and 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 it's not it's not like this. A lot of documentaries are shot like long lens observing, and it's yeah. and it's handheld, and we all recognize that. In reality, sometimes it's wide angle lens. We're right there with them. This has a very like. Like every shot sort of moves towards something and around it and, and you know, it creates that dreamlike quality and it's very unique way of looking at something. Yet those performances were very real. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I have one last thing. Yeah. As much as I, I didn't love the movie, it's, it's still a movie I have recommended to people oh, to see. It's one of those movies that I, I think 
people should experience, even though I didn't. Yeah. Didn't and it's it, with me. you know I, I one of those movies I could never watch home alone. I could never watch on oh, DVD. On the, on yeah. the I would need to be in a theater where I can't escape it, where mm. I'm alone with that experience. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Tree of Life, Life of Trees. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, everybody, be sure to stick around for this day in rad history. But first, we want to thank our sponsors, Magic Duels of the Planeswalker 2012. Launched last month on Xbox Live Arcade, PC, Steam, and the PlayStation Network. Maybe we you have saw some us play it. Us playing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, a new game built on the success of the original Duels of the Planeswalker game, which was amazing. Uh, you can check out a free demo. If you don't know how to play Magic, you've heard about Magic and all this stuff, this is probably the best, if not the best way to get your brain around how to play Magic. Probably and the best, if not, if not the best. best. <laughs> uh, uh, also, once you get your brain around it, later this month, Magic 2012 core set launches with new cards, and some of the cards are gonna be based on the cards that are now currently playable in Duels of the Planeswalker. Right. It's a perfect way uh, to play Magic face-to-face -face with actual cards. So you learn it on the game, you come in and play it, and also on September 10th, like Voltron, they are coming together to form a giant robot of awesome card time. Wizards of the Coast, Coast is bringing together Duels of the Planeswalkers to 2012 and Magic 2012 core set players at hobby stores all over the world for an event unlike they've ever run before. Magic celebration. We, be there with bells on. We are we gonna be there. We might be doing that ourselves. We may or may not have bells on. It, I don't know about bells, but it'll be fun. It's it's awesome. Magic it's super is fun. super fun. I'm like, hey guys. We'll like, Dan, Dan, we're gonna be there with bells on was not literal. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I'm like, guys, uh, where, where are your bells? Where are your yeah. bells? Uh, I'm uh, yeah. I'm just one of those guys that old old timey pickpockets would test on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, we will wow. see you at Comic Con Friday night. Wow. Be there, be square. Check us out tomorrow for a look at the iCade accessory for the iPad. Today is July seventh, and on this day in Rad history, in 1550, chocolate is first introduced in Europe. Wonderful. I guess it's from Mexico. Wonderful, it is right? wonderful. And on tomorrow's day in Red History in 1550, the first Peanut chocolate butter. was... Uh, <laughs> died from a chocolate overdose. <laughs> yeah. Well, I welcome our chocolate overlords. <laughs> Could you imagine being... Having like a in world. A, Never even... It's one thing when you're kidding, you're introduced to things that you... Yeah. you know, another thing of like, you've experienced all there is to experience, and someone said there's something new for you to taste, and it's freaking chocolate. Well, that's the thing. It's not like, oh, this is a new mixture of chocolate, peanuts, and yeah, caramel, yeah. that the ratio is fine. It's like, you go from, I don't know what the hell you have before that for like candy. Like sweet jellies. Heart, you think, you sweet think jellies, and you're like, this jelly is so sweet, but I wish there was cocoa powder. Do you think somebody in Europe was like, oh my god, thank god, I finally have something to do with all this nougat I've been making. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were like, let's just wrap everything we have in this shit. <laughs> all candy bars are created. Thank you at Hajalti. <laughs>